Thank you very much. This is really what our country is all about. We're going to bring it back. We're going to bring it back from hell because right now we're in hell. And a big hello to Iowa. You've been tremendous. We have uh, all victories in Iowa, primary victories, election victories. We had them in other states also, but they didn't count them. But uh, we had them in Iowa, and I want to just tell you I'm really honored. Uh, this is a great turnout. This is a beautiful section. They said, they said you broke the all-time record in this building, so that's pretty good. But I'm thrilled to be back with thousands of proud, hard-working American patriots in the heartland of America. It really is. It's incredible people. You built, you built this country. Let me begin by wishing everyone a very happy Thanksgiving. It's happening very soon. And think of this, we're just 58 days away from Iowa's first in the nation caucuses. And who do you think uh, kept you first in the nation? I wonder who, I think. With not a lot of help from other people, but we kept you first in the nation. On Monday, January 15th, we're going to win the Iowa caucuses. We're going to crush crooked Joe Biden next November. And we're going to very simply make America great again. I want to thank some of our great politicians and celebrities and others. We got a lot of them in this room, but one of them, the first person to endorse me in the whole country. Forget about Iowa. He's in the whole country. Brad Zahn, your senator. Come here, Brad. He's incredible. He was the first one in the whole country. He, before I announced, he said, this, this guy in New York should run. He's going to be the one to do it. And uh, I tend to remember those people. You know, I happen to be loyal, unlike some people, right? We, we, happen, to be, we happen to be loyal. So thanks very much, Brad. I appreciate it. Tim Crayenbrink. Tim, thank you very much. Where's Tim? Thank you. Thank you very much. Jeff Taylor and Lynn Evans. Incredible. Thank you. Where are you? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great, incredible people. State representatives, uh, and remember this name, Bobby Kaufman, because he has got a great future. Maybe even a better future than his father. I don't know. I don't want to get into family squabbles. Maybe even better than his father, who happens to be great. Mike Sexton, Derek Wolf. Derek, thank you. Great job. Great job. Thanks, Derek. Luana Stoltenberg, who is terrific. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Luana. And National Committee Woman, Tamara Scott. Tamara. Thank you very much, great. Thank you very much. And Webster County Sheriff, there's no crime in that county, Luke Fleener. Where's Luke? Where is Luke? There's no crime with Luke. I want to just thank everybody. It's an incredible uh, group of people, and the people I introduced, they gave me their endorsements early, and they gave them strong, and we appreciate it, and we're supposedly like 40 or 50 points up but you know we won't do like in the nfl go prevent defense we have to keep going right and we're going to be back four or five times maybe six times i understand and we'll be back before the election which is taking place very very soon your caucuses and uh, you are indeed first in the nation and we're going to keep you that way we're going to keep you that way for a long time Today, the radical left Democrats and their allies in the fake news media, right back there, all those people with the camera. Are having an absolute meltdown because last night our campaign won a gigantic court victory in Colorado. (laughs) 
We had a very radical left judge, and uh, the radical left judge was saying a lot of things that weren't nice. And uh, in the end, uh, she saw the light. She saw the light and did what was supposed to have been done. And we won, and we demolished their de — and defeated. You know, they had a outrageous attempt. The same people that have been suing me for, like, seven years. <laughs> crew. You ever hear of Crew? Bunch of losers. Crew. <laughs> They've been losing for seven years, but they don't stop. They'll never stop. But it was an outrageous attempt at uh, disenfranchising millions and millions of voters by getting us thrown off the ballot. And uh, the judge, in the end, said, uh, we can't do that. So, you know, they can't do that. If they did that, I think it would have been very difficult for our country. So we've now beaten the radical left Democrats, election rigging, ballot qualification scam in Colorado and Michigan and Minnesota and New Hampshire and other states. And uh, we're just on our way. It was just another idea. They talked about the 14th Amendment. Uh, you know, they came up with this concept. Maybe we can keep them up. Maybe just what are we going to do with this guy? This guy is crazy. What are we going to do with him? They're very tired of uh, us. You know, we won the first one and we won the second one even bigger. And, uh, and we, got, we got screwed. That's what happened. We had a rigged election. Our opponents are showing every day that they hate democracy. They're trying every illegal move they can to try and steal this election because they know that in a free and fair fight against President Trump and crooked Joe Biden, uh, Biden doesn't have a shot. He's going to be going down into his basement again. He's going to be hiding. Now, when you look at all the things that even if you just go to some of the more modern, the modern things that we caught, like the 51 agent saying it was Russia disinformation, the laptop from hell, right? Russia disinformation or the FBI Twitter files or so much else. We don't even have to go into all of the ballot stuffing that is on tape from the 2,000 mules. You know, you look at 2,000 mules and you see thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands, actually, of votes being stuffed into ballot boxes. They don't want to hear about that. They don't want to hear. Now, we can never forget. We can never let history go. You know, anybody that doesn't study history and take it to heart is a fool. And you have to know because we can't let that happen again. We can't let it happen again. Under crooked Joe Biden, we have uncontrolled inflation, an invasion of our southern border, rampant crime, wars in Europe, and a war that just started in the Middle East. And uh, look, at, look at what's going on with the attack on Israel. Uh, this world is a mess. You know, I was very honored. One of the strongest leaders, thank you. One of the, I think he said good thing. <laughs> One of the strongest leaders, Viktor Orban from Hungary, they asked him two weeks ago, they asked him, what would you tell President Biden? There's so many things going on with wars all over the world. And in his country, you have inflation and you have the border. That's the worst border probably ever anywhere in the world. I don't think there's ever been a border like that in the world. And just uh, three years ago, we had the best border we ever had, the best. And now we have the worst border we've ever had, but the worst border in the world. And they asked this leader, and he's a very strong man, very strong, powerful man, and one of the most respected leaders in the world. It's tough. No games, right? Hungry. And uh, they asked him, what would you tell President Biden to do? He said, I tell him to get out of office and let Trump run the thing, because when he ran it, we had no wars, we had no problems. He defeated ISIS. He totally defeated ISIS. China was not a problem. They respected him. He used a stronger word than respect, but I don't want to use that. But China respected him. Russia respected him. Kim Jong-un respected him from North Korea. And now our world is a mess like we've never seen before. The world is a mess and our country is a mess. I don't think we've ever seen anything like it. How about they don't want to bring it up, the fake news anymore, but how about when you Talk about the most embarrassing period of time in the history of our country, which is Afghanistan. The way we surrendered, it was like a surrender. Uh, we've never had a time like that. Giving away $85 billion worth of equipment, leaving hundreds and hundreds of people there. We don't even know how many people are still there. Taking out the soldiers first. You take the soldiers out last. 
And uh, we had 13 dead and 38 horribly injured and hundreds of people killed. Hundreds of people killed. That was the worst uh, period of time, I think, and most embarrassing for our country in the history of our country. It's never been anything like it. And we're not going to let that crap happen again with our country. We can't. We can't. Every sane person without what they call Trump derangement syndrome, you know what that is? It's a great honor. I had a disease named after me. Trump derangement syndrome wants to get back to how great we had it under the Trump administration. We had the strongest economy in the history of our country. We had the most secure border that we've ever had by far. We had peace all over the world. It was called peace through strength. We had Iran as a country that wasn't going to go anywhere or do anything. They weren't. And I told a story last week or two weeks ago for the first time when we, we love you. thank you. Thank you. Doesn't sound like my kind of a lover, but that's okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> He's old man, that guy, I gotta tell you. You gotta, you gotta see this guy. Anyway, but thank you very much. The, uh, you know, something happened that was very interesting because uh, one of our drones was shot down and we countered with that and they had a counter. This is Iran and they countered. I said, if you counter, you're gonna be in deep trouble. If you counter, you better not counter. And they called us and they said, listen, we're going to aim at a fort, a military base, but we're not going to hit it. These are very accurate missiles. They have actually very accurate missiles. They have very good stuff, unfortunately. But we're going to send up 18 missiles and we're not going to hit. So of the 18 missiles, six of them self-destructed in air. And the rest of them landed outside of the military base and areas where there were no people. So nobody was killed. They had some explosions. But when they call us to tell us, listen, don't be upset, don't be angry, we sort of have to do it because we have to do it. You know, they have self-respect also. We hit them, they have to do something. But we're going to hit, but we're not going to hurt anybody. Please understand that. And I said, that's a sign of respect. Do you think they do that now? We had 59 attacks over the last three or four weeks. They don't say we're not going to hurt anybody. They're trying badly to hurt people. But with me, they said, we're not going to hurt anybody. We're not going to do anything that's bad. Please understand. Don't get angry at us, please. So that's the way it should be, right? That's the way it should be. <laughs> this week, Crooked Joe Biden was in San Francisco for a summit with China, looking like he had absolutely no idea where he was, what was happening, what the hell he was supposed to do. He walked up with a man who looks like a piece of granite, right? <laughs> He's strong like granite. He's strong. I know him very well. President Xi of China. And he's standing there. Uh, you know, he's a fierce, he's a fierce person. Now, the press doesn't like it when I say good things about it, But, you know, what can I say? He runs 1.4 billion people with an iron hand. And they say, oh, he said good things about him. No, he happens to be a very smart person. If I say a certain leader is smart that's controlling a big part of the world, the press gets upset that I say smart because that's a good thing. No, no, very smart people. These are very smart people, but they're dealing with very stupid people. Our leader, our leader is a stupid person. Our leader... <laughs> Our leader can't get off this stage. You see this stage? When he's finished with the speech, by the time whatever it is he's taking wears off, and he's, he's looking. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How do I leave? That's what happened. This is the guy we have keeping us out of nuclear war. And by the way, I've been indicted more times than Alphonse Capone. <laughs> He's the most vicious of all gangsters. If he took you to dinner and if you didn't look proper, if you laughed a little bit, he might think you're laughing at him. It's dangerous to laugh. He'd kill you immediately. He was indicted one time. I was indicted four times. Once I got indicted the first time, though, I said, now the gloves are off. 
because out of respect for the office of the presidency, very important, I never hit him this hard. But now I say it. He's the most incompetent president we've ever had. He's the worst president we've ever had. He's a total crook. A total crook. I would never say those things because I just out of respect for the office. I would never say those things. But now you can say it. We have a crooked president who gets money from China. That's why everyone says he's so weak with China. You know why? Because he got a lot of money from China. And they know how much. We don't. And Jamie Comer and Jim and everybody, they're doing a good job. But they'll never find out the real numbers. But China knows the real numbers. And it's a lot. And we have a, uh, a president who's very corrupt and who's... Uh, controlled very much by a lot of foreign countries. And this is not a man that should be running our country. It's not a man that should have ever been uh, ascended to power, because you know what happened, and it was a disgrace. But now I say it. So now I can talk, because when I get in that, you know, that's not supposed to happen. When you were a pop, we got 75 million votes. We got more votes than any sitting president in history by far. And if we got millions of less, they said you had to win. If we got, we got 63 million votes the first time, so you got many millions more votes. And they said, if you get the same 63, there's no way you can lose. Well, we got many millions more than that. So we had a situation. We could never let that happen again, because we're not going to have a country less left. But now it allows me to speak properly. He's incompetent. He's the worst president we've ever had. And the happiest person anywhere in this country right now is Jimmy Carter, because his administration looked brilliant compared to these clowns. It looked brilliant. Jimmy Carter was, compared to Biden, Jimmy Carter was a brilliant, brilliant president. And I was never a big fan. He was a brilliant president. I mean, compared, there's never been a president like this. This guy's the worst. Every voter needs to ask themselves, who do you want to have sitting across the table from President Xi or President Putin? Which, by the way, I stopped his pipeline in Europe. You know that, right? They said, oh, Trump was weak on Russia. Putin said to me, if you're weak on Russia, I'd, like, I'd hate like hell to see a strong guy. I stopped his pipeline. And Biden then approved it when Putin said you got to approve it and Biden approved it but I don't know how many people know it's called Nord Stream 2 nobody ever heard of it until I came along I said they're building a pipeline to Germany and going to take care of all of Europe and we're defending Europe with NATO where we spent a lot more but what I did is I cut it back and I got everybody to now pay because most of them weren't paying a little thing that the press never likes reporting on but 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 I ended the pipeline, the biggest thing they ever did. There's nothing bigger than what they did. They were building this massive pipeline. I stopped it. And then Biden came in, and within the first week, he approved it, and it got built. And I think it's just a shame. And then they say, because they're all about misinformation, all about misinformation. And they'll say, Trump was weak on Russia. And they say, man, the people that know what's going on, they say, man, and not only that, the sanctions and everything else. By the way, Russia would have never, ever in a million years invaded Ukraine. And Putin knew that. Putin knew that. He knew that. Since Crooked Joe took off, it's, it's been one Biden surrender and disaster after another from China. If you take a look at what's going on over there, both on trade, I mean, what's happening, at least they haven't had the courage to take off my tariffs on China because just too much money. We're taking in hundreds of billions of dollars because of tariffs I put on China. And you read where China's not doing so well right now. You know why? Thank you very much. <laughs> although, although I did get Iowa and farmers, I got the farmers and Actually, some manufacturers came out of it, too. $28 billion, right? $28 billion. You think Biden lies awake at night, tossing and turning and sweating and thinking about how he's going to get $28 billion from China for the farmers of Iowa and Nebraska and some of the farm states? Wisconsin? No, but a lot of people in this room opened up big fat checks and they went out. I said... When I get finished with this deal, because I made a great deal with China, I don't talk about it after COVID because I think it was so horrible what happened 
because it came out of the Wuhan labs, and I said it a long time ago. And what, what happened, and I believe it was incompetence. A lot of people say it wasn't incompetence. It was on purpose to get rid of me. But a lot of, I don't believe that, actually. I believe it was incompetence. Somebody came out. He had it. He gave it to the girlfriend. The girlfriend died. He died. Everybody started dying. I believe it was gross incompetence, which, you know, is terrible. But when you look at what happened there and you look at all of the, the problems that this world has suffered, and uh, I said, I want money from them. And we took in hundreds of billions of dollars over the years. And we gave $28 billion to the farmers. And just so you know, my people have said, sir, please don't talk about that so much. It makes you sound very arrogant. I said, wait a minute. I got $28 billion for the farmers of Iowa. And other farm sites. And I told them a year before I got that money, and a year before we made the best trade deal anyone's ever seen, which was actually with China, where they bought $50 billion worth of, and they're supposed to be doing it. The problem is nobody's policing them now, because these guys don't know they're alive. But you're supposed to police them. But they were buying $50 billion. And I said, remember the one thing? Go out, relax for a little while, but soon you can go out, buy more land and bigger tractors, right? I said, buy bigger tractors. Which kind of tractor do you like? John Deere? Case? What do you like? John Deere? They're all beautiful. So as long as they're made in this country, we like them, right? <laughs> Biden shut down the investigation into the Wuhan lab. He canceled my program to root out Chinese spies. He weakened my China tariffs. They are weakened. And we had strong tariffs. They used to come in and say, we don't want... You know, at the beginning, when I put the tariffs on, they have great negotiators. They said, we don't really care. We, we don't care. I said, they don't care. Let's raise them. So we raised them from 10% to 20% to 30% to 40% to 50%. Then one day they came in. Look, you got to stop. You're killing us with these. I said, ah, it did have an impact, you know? No, they're great negotiators. They pretended they didn't care about them. And... That really just led me to keep doing it, because we took in so much money. But Biden let China open up military bases in Cuba, 90 miles off our shores. Can you believe that? They have a base in Cuba. Nobody even talks. The fake news doesn't talk about it, because it's so bad. Anything bad, they don't talk about. They don't talk about Afghanistan withdrawal, either. And I was going to withdraw, too, but with dignity and strength. And the soldiers were coming out last. And we were going to keep Bagram. Bagram is the biggest air base just about there is anywhere in the world. The biggest runway is most powerful. They can hold, I think they're eight feet deep in concrete. They can hold anything. And we gave it up. And I didn't want it for Afghanistan. I wanted it because that's one hour away from where China makes their nuclear missiles. And we gave it up. Why did we give it up? This thing cost billions of dollars many years ago. We didn't need it for Afghanistan, but it was right next to where they make their missiles, China. And now you know who occupies that? China! occupies it. How stupid are these people? It's so sad. But we'll get it back, maybe. You know, maybe we'll get it back as part of a trade deal. Give us back that damn airport. And, you know, we didn't have one soldier killed in 18 months. I told, I spoke to the head of the... I spoke to Abdul, the head of the Taliban. And the press went crazy. You spoke to him over the phone. I said, yeah, you know, that's where the killing is. I got to speak to him. I can't speak to, I can't speak to Baron Trump. I can't speak to, I can't speak to this beautiful young lady in the first row with the glasses. How are you? She looks like she's a good fan. She's got all that Trump stuff on her. But it's not going to help speaking to you. But they said to me, why are you speaking to him? I said, well, why do we ask Jesse James, right? Jesse James, great bank robber. They say, Jesse, Jesse, why do you always rob banks? He says, because that's where the money is, right? <laughs> and I say the same thing. Why do you speak to the Taliban? Because that's where the killing was, right? And I said, uh, Abdul, if you do this, you're going to be hit harder than anybody's ever been hit by our country. Don't do it. And he said, may I ask you a question, Your Excellency? He called me Your Excellency. I wonder if he calls Biden Your Excellency. I don't think so. <laughs> he said, but why, but why do you... Send me a picture of my house. I said, you'll have to think about that, Abdul. You'll have to think about it.
And we didn't have one soldier even shot at for 18 months after that. Not one soldier was shot at until we had that catastrophe of the election, the election catastrophe, which led to the stupidest pullout that if you asked a child, any five or six year old children here, because if I see that young lady, she's very young. If I asked her, would you pull your soldiers out first or last? She would say, sir, you'd pull your soldiers out last. The only ones that would pull them out first are the Biden people. If you think about it, not one good thing has happened in three years. Inflation's killing us, everything. There hasn't been one good thing to happen in the Biden. Now he wants to go all electric cars. Let's go all electric. They don't go far and they cost too much, right? Very simple. It sounds like it's very simple. They don't go far. You know, I think it's great if you want to, you know, go for a ride for about 15 minutes before you have to. We're going to change it all. That thing comes off right away, immediately. That mandate, we'll call it a mandate, comes off right away. But it's very simple. Crooked Joe is weak on China because Crooked Joe is owned by China. He's owned by China. Does anybody know that? He's a corrupt politician and he's totally compromised. See, now I can say that because he went after me. I would never have said that because of the office of the president. Even if I believed that, I wouldn't have said it because it's a rough thing to say, but he's true. It's a, he's a corrupt politician, and he's owned by a lot of these countries. Afghanistan also. His son got 83000 a month, didn't he? And he got $3 million upfront payment to advise them on oil. And he knew nothing about energy or oil. He got 83000 a month, they say. Think of that. 83000 a month and an upfront payment of $3 million to be on their board and to advise them on energy. What do you know about energy? Uh, no, no, nothing. Oh. Remember the interview? What do you know about energy, Hunter? Nothing. The Biden crime family took millions of dollars from a company controlled by the Chinese Communist Party, with Joe Biden personally receiving large deposits of cash. And now we have a Manchurian candidate in the Oval Office. He's a Manchurian candidate. You know the Manchurian candidate? Go check it out. Go watch the movie. It was pretty good. Not as bad as the real thing. That's one thing. The real thing is even worse. But less than one year from now, we will take back the White House from this crooked person. Because Joe Biden's banana republic ends on November 5th, 2024. We got to make sure it ends. And if it doesn't end, we don't have a country anymore, just so you understand. I don't want to be negative. If it doesn't end, we don't have a country anymore. This week, we also learned that Joe is planning yet another Biden betrayal. It was just reported that the Biden administration has been secretly plotting to resurrect one of the all-time worst sellouts and deals ever made by our country. I canceled it, you remember? Killing American workers, the disastrous Trans-Pacific Partnership. Remember that? The TPP was a globalist hit job on family farmers, American manufacturers, and in particular on automakers. You won't make any more cars here. I hope the union heads know that because I think we're going to get most of the auto workers because when, when they go to all electric cars, which is preposterous, you can't make them here because we don't have the minerals, we don't have the materials for it. We have a thing called gasoline. That's what we have. And we should be using what we have, not what China has. So they won't be making cars here. So we're not going to be making cars. So those auto workers, they can get there. Whatever deal they make is no good because you're not going to have any car making in two years if uh, they win. If they win the election, you won't be making any cars here. People don't know. We lost over 50 percent of our car manufacturing business over the last 30 years with stupid politicians. It went to Mexico, it went to Canada, and it went to China and lots of other places and Japan. It went to a lot of places. The one place it didn't go is here. 52 percent. Hillary Clinton, Rhonda Sanctimonious, and Crooked Joe were all for it. They all wanted to do it. But I just said, nope, I'm not going to let it happen. And I stopped PPP my very first week as president of the United States. And a lot of people were extremely happy. You know, we're happy people that knew what was happening because that would have killed our manufacturing businesses in this country. Now Crooked Joe is back with TPP2. It's worse than the first one. Threatening to pulverize farmers and manufacturers with another massive globalist monstrosity designed to turbocharge outsourcing 
to Asia. It's going to Asia. Asia is doing very well. Under the next the administration and our next administration, Biden plan for TPP2 will be dead on day one. It'll be dead before I get to the top of the stairs. We have so many different things. I'll give you an example. So, you know how beautiful the inauguration is. You're down and you're walking up these beautiful stairs to Capitol. Everything's so beautiful. As I'm walking up, I'll be signing about four or five different documents. I'm not going to wait to get to the other. I may even have, I may even have a very tiny little desk put on the 20th stair. Because I always like to sign with a desk. Your signature looks much better than holding it up like that. But I may have a little tiny desk put up there so that I can sign on the border. I can sign. We're going to complete everything. You know, we built over 500 miles of wall, but we're going to we're going to secure our border. If we didn't have that wall, forget it. And by the way, Mexico paid for a lot of it. You know, they had 28,000 soldiers that they paid. Couldn't get them to pay for the wall because there's no mechanism to do that. How do they pay for a wall that we're building? You know, there was a little legal problem. But they paid much more because they paid for 28,000 soldiers along the border that did a whole beautiful job, you know, with the bullets going both ways. Pancho Villa, do you ever see? <laughs> Pancho They have, they're less politically correct than we are, I can tell you that. And they did a great job. And we're going to do another thing. We're going to be signing something. Before I get to the top step, I'm seriously thinking about doing this. Uh, we'll knock out TPP. We'll do that. It'll only take an instant. But we're going to be signing to do something else. Drill, baby, drill. That's what we're going to be signing. <laughs> you know, I love these guys. More, you know what these people are? These are front row Joes. They've been here for, like, some of them, a hundred rallies. This isn't a rally. This is just a little get together. You got to see these rallies. They're bigger than ever. So here, you guys have to split this out. See what that says? Trump caucus, Captain. Can I give it to them? Do you mind? Okay. Here. Thank you very much. So you guys figure it out who gets it, you know? I have another one here. We'll give it to a real caucus, Captain, right? Uh, but, but we're going to sign that. Our military is fantastic, what we did. You know, don't forget, we defeated ISIS. We knocked them out. People don't realize. It's supposed to take four years, and we did it in four weeks. But we're going to sign some of these things before I get to the top. I think that would be a cool expression. In other words, I don't want to wait to get to the top of the steps. They go home and change. First lady, you have a different suit. I'd like to be a little comfortable. No, we'll sign before we get to the top of the steps on the border. No more coming in unless you come in legally. Very simple. Very simple. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful, beautiful chant, USA. And somehow they associated with me, which is pretty sad because that means a lot of people they don't associate. It's like Biden. We've got to stop the MAGA movement, MAGA. You know what MAGA means, Joe? If you asked him, what does MAGA mean? I don't know. It's radical. He goes, it's radical. No, it means make America great again. That's all it means. We must stop this radical movement. We must stop this radical movement to make America great again. We're going to stop it. As president, I traveled all over the world fighting and winning on behalf of Iowa farmers. Worked hard with that because you were really behind the eight ball when I got here. When I came here originally seven years ago, you were absolutely getting decimated. I made new farm deals. I got... Uh, the USMCA done. That's Mexico, Canada, because they were killing you. Mexico and Canada was killing you. And we got rid of NAFTA, which was the worst trade deal ever made, and we replaced it with the USMCA, and now you're doing great. It's the best trade deal ever made. 
In fact, it was such a good deal that the farmers that are from Canada and Mexico and the, frankly, Mexican and Canadian government, Canada wants to renegotiate the deal. Mexico wants to renegotiate. Isn't it nice when you make a deal that they want to renegotiate? Problem with us, we made NAFTA. It was bad. You know that they had typos that were bad typos, like on numbers where you're paying much more. And they could have easily corrected it just by saying, I'm sorry, we made they, nobody bothered to correct it. So you went many decades with an after deal with typos where you were paying more because nobody wanted to correct it. That's how weak, lazy, stupid we are. The NAFTA deal was the worst trade deal in the history of our country. And the USMCA is probably the best. Although I'd say the deal with China is good. The deal with Japan I made is very good. I renegotiated all those deals. I took on communist China like no administration in history, bringing hundreds of billions of dollars pouring into our treasury when no other president had gotten literally 10 cents. Not one president took in 10 cents. I took in hundreds of billions of dollars. And no one gets abused on trade worse than American agriculture for some reason, yet no other president lifts a finger. Ron DeSanctimonious, by the way, was very bad as a congressman to farmers. He was very bad. I mean, look, I don't, I'm just, I can only say it. He was very bad on farmers, and he was totally against ethanol. Now a miracle happened. He's in favor of ethanol. But you know, one thing I learned about politicians, and I've known it for a long time, whatever they come out with first, that's where they end up. So they're going to, you know, come out in favor of ethanol all of a sudden out of nowhere. He was very bad on ethanol, and he was very bad on farmers. He was against a lot of different things in the farm bill. And I got those farm bills passed quickly and effectively, and you got your money, but you got that $28 billion, and that was the greatest thing, I, I tell you. So my guys say, please, sir, don't, don't take it. For granted that you're going to win Iowa. It doesn't sound good. So when I say to him, of course it does. I got him $28 billion. Am I going to say, who the hell else? Who the hell else would you vote for? Now, there may be some people that don't like my attitude, but my attitude is what gets us there. You know, they said a lot of them. I don't know if you've seen, they have a lot of this, uh, you don't mind if, when I go off this thing. It's so much more interesting, right? <laughs> but they have a lot of people that say, we want Trump policy without Trump because we don't like his personality. And then somebody who's actually a brilliant commentator, they said, here's the problem that Trump policy doesn't work without Trump because they're never going to be able to get it. Right? Under my leadership, we will have a rebirth of loyalty to the American farmer starting at noon on Inauguration Day 2025. And not only the farmer, manufacturers, everything else. To defend our farmers, I will pass the Trump Reciprocal Trade Act. You know what that is? If China or any other country makes us pay a 100 or 200 or 300 percent tariff or tax, we will make them pay an identical one, two, or three hundred percent tax rate back. And that will solve the problem, and we're going to take in a lot of money, or all those taxes will disappear. Right now, you know, they charge us a hundred percent, two hundred percent. I put a tremendous tax on their cars, and it really hurt them. And as you know, China's not doing well right now. They're announcing their economies, but that's because of the tariffs I put on. And I was nice on those tariffs. I'd only charge them like 50 to 100 percent. They were lucky. But I would have gotten a lot less nice if they want to play cute, because what they're doing now, they're, they're treating us like children. They're not treating us with respect. They always treated us with respect. Eh? And I like President Xi. I got along with him until COVID. The COVID was a step too far. But I got along, you know, I thought he was a great guy. I thought, you know, he's heading a country. He's for China. I'm for the USA. So I understand that. I mean, that's the way it goes. But I always got along well with him. I got along well with Putin. That's a good thing. He would have never gone in. But I got along well with Putin. That's a good thing. He's got many, many nuclear weapons. And, you know, the next war is going to be a nuclear war. And that's called obliteration. And we have a man that can't put two sentences together negotiating for us. We have a man that, as I said, can't find the stairs off this platform, and he's going to save us from nuclear war. We have never been in such 
danger, in my opinion, as we are right now, because we're not a respected country anymore. And we have a man that doesn't have a clue, doesn't have a clue. <laughs> you better hope so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will revoke China's most favored nation trade status. Think of this. They have a most favored nation because they're a growing country. Well, we're like a growing country, too. We're trying to fix our cities that are all in decay, run by Democrats, by the way, run by Democrats, every one of them. They're in decay. I met your policeman backstage. I said, I'll bet you have uh, no crime here. No, sir, we have none. I said, and if you do, what do you do? We take care of it, sir. There's no crime. You don't have people getting bopped over the back of the head. You don't have people being pushed into railroad trains or, in our case, subways. You don't have any of that stuff. But these guys, these are real important people. These are great people. We have to give them tremendous honor and respect. Law enforcement. Law enforcement. Because they'll stop all the problems with crime. And I'll once again, as I have for four years there and even beyond that, uh, stood up for Iowa ethanol like no president in history. I had your two senators come in and they would always say, please, please, please help me, help me with it. And I would take care of it for them. Uh, I don't know what they've done for me, but this is minor details, right? There's no quid pro quo, right? No quid. Remember that? He was a quid pro quo. Nobody knew what it meant. Adam Shifty Shift with a neck like a pencil. He said, I said, how does he, how does he hold up that fat, ugly face with a neck, with a neck, no, a pencil neck. We call him pencil neck. What a dishonest guy. You know, when I first came, he said to me, Sir, could I ask you, what's worse, business people or politicians? I said, oh, business people, they're much tougher. That was after about a week. I said, business people. Now I say, it's not even a contest. Politicians are the worst. They're disloyal. Many are crooked. No, politicians are worse than business people. Business people are babies. They're just babies. They're innocent lambs compared to politicians. You don't have... Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Adam Shifty Schiff. Just as I promised, as president, I issued a historic rule declaring that E-15 would be made available all year round, and I got it done. I got it done. Nobody else got it done. Got it done. That was a big deal. And I also let them use the existing pumps. You know, they wanted to go out and spend hundreds of millions of dollars on existing pumps. I said, what's uh, the difference? He said, well, the old ones are much better, sir. But these are made in an environmentally friendly way. But the old ones are much better. And uh, really, sir, I think uh, if you could do that, it would be great. I saved hundreds of millions of dollars for people, and therefore that passes on to you, the people here. Some of the people are people that have the pumps, but we saved hundreds of millions of dollars, allowing them to use the equipment that was already there, if it was good. Every Iowan needs to know that Ron DeSanctimonious is a raging opponent of a lot of your farm situation, including ethanol, which I said, and spent the entire time in Congress angrily railing against the renewable fuel standard. He was told, you got to go, if he announces, I don't know if he's going to look, he's going, he's going down the tubes. He's down the tubes. There's another one. You know, you talk about loyalty, comes to me. He's failing. He's like a wounded bird falling to the ground, right? He's running against the department ahead of the Adam Putnam. He was the head of uh, agriculture in Florida, which is actually the second position after the governor. And Putnam was there like for eight years, and he raised a lot of money. He was running. He had like close to a 40-point lead on Ron DeSanctimonious, and DeSanctimonious comes to see me. And he said, sir, sir, oh, please, sir. If you gave me, and you're very popular in Florida, if you gave me your endorsement, I think I could win. I said, Ron, honestly, I think you're so far down that if Abraham Lincoln and George Washington came back from the dead, they couldn't get you. But I said, but, you know, I didn't know uh, Adam Putnam. I didn't know him, so I said, what the hell, let's give it a chance. So he wrote, I said, give me uh, some kind of uh, endorsement, write it out for me, Ron. 
So he writes it, write it out. It was so bad. It was so bad. I don't know how this guy got into the schools. I really don't. Because he's not doing good. But it was so bad, and I changed it, made it really good, and I gave him an endorsement. He became like a human rocket ship, and he wiped out Adam Putnam. They, they were already measuring the carpets in Tallahassee. That's where the governor's mansion is. But they were measuring carpets. They were, me they were all set to win. And the next day, it was over. I mean, a primary took place. And then I got him past somebody who turned out to be a crackhead. But at the time, he was, <laughs> you know who I'm talking. He was going to be the next president of the United States at some point. And he was running, and Ron didn't think he could win. And I said, Ron, we'll do a couple of rallies. And I gave him either two or three monster rallies. And those rallies are effective. They get a lot. I got you. I got a lot of guys elected right here, including Grassley who was having a problem, and including Joni Ernst, who had a big problem. Could you do, could you do, sir, a rally for me in Iowa? Absolutely. You think it's easy to come all the way from wherever the hell I am and do a rally in front? I got him elected, remember that. But Ron DeSantis, I got him elected. You know, when you talk about branding, I saw him, I think it was NBC the other day, and it was NBC straight for a change. You know, that's about 3% of the time. And they were doing an interview. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to have with us Governor Ron DeSantis of Florida. And he goes, no, it's DeSantis. In other words, when you can get somebody's name changed, that's called a good brand. <laughs> Governor Ron DeSantis. So he looks at me with tears in his eyes. Could I do it? Could I do it? I did it. And then I did rallies for him. I got him elected. And that was it. I didn't know him that well. But... He did a little defense of me with the uh, impeachment hoax number one and impeachment hoax number two, two hoaxes. And I won. But, you know, Jim Jordan and others did a much better defense. But he was one of the 150 or so congressmen. You'd see him on television defending me a little bit. So I figured, you know, I didn't know Adam Putnam. So I did it. And he became a rocket and he won easily. And then he went and he beat the guy who was going to be, you know, great future. The guy didn't have a great future, but he would have been a disaster as governor, by the way. So I did a favor to the people of Florida. But uh, we did that. And then four years later, they say to Ron DeSantis, Governor, Governor, would you run against President Trump? He said, I have no comment. No comment. You know what that means, front row Joes? That means he's going to run, right? That means he's going to run. And I said, that son of a bitch is going to run. <laughs> so then uh, my people, who are very good, very good, but sometimes not wise, I hit him hard right from the beginning. They said, sir, please don't hit him so hard. Why, he's a Republican. Who the hell cares? I don't, you care? Who cares if he's a Republican? Why, he's a Republican, sir. Please don't hit him so hard. He's a Republican. I don't care if he's a Republican. He's a disloyal guy. I got him elected. And by the way, you got to look at the numbers because he was. And then the other day, the worst of all, I tell you this, it was disgusting. I watched him be interviewed, and they said, well, President Trump got you elected. No, no, he didn't get me elected. He actually tried to deny it, and I have so many people now. All you have to do is go back and look at the numbers. He was not electable. He was so far behind Adam Putnam. It was over. And now he's trying to say, well, without his, I think I would have won. I was doing very well. This guy, when he said that, now he's finished in 28. He's got no chance in 28. He's got no chance. When he said that one, and you'll, we'll put out the numbers, we'll show you. He was dead. He was dead as a doornail. But unlike the Sanctus, I will be your ethanol champion for four more years in the White House. Crooked Joe Biden is also waging a demented crusade to totally annihilate ethanol. He wants to annihilate it. And Biden's insane electric vehicle mandate will totally decimate gas-powered cars and if that happens, ethanol is dead. You know that, right? Ethanol will be dead. Under a Trump administration, gasoline-powered engines will be not only allowed, but will be very much pushed because it's incredible, including hybrids. Hybrids are very good. Hybrids are much better because you can actually go a little bit further than the candy store. <laughs> so we're going to allow gasoline powered engines, but we are not going to allow child sexual mutilation. We're not going to allow that.
We're not going to allow that. Can you imagine going back 10 or 15 years and saying, as a politician, can you believe I'm a politician? I don't feel like a politician, but I guess I'm a politician. We are not going to allow child sexual mutilation. Could you imagine hearing those words? Yeah, we have to protect children from mutilation where they don't even get parental consent. That's another one. We will make sure that we have parental, parental consent. Who the hell? Of course you have to have parental consent. But now you have to say it and you have to pass laws to give parents parental consent. And even if you look at athletics, where I have to make the statement, we will not allow men to play in women's sports. Did you see the other day a young lady, a good field hockey player? I don't know too much about field hockey, but I know if a guy hits the ball, it goes very fast. <laughs> Faster, unless we have a superhuman here. But generally speaking, that's not going to happen. He whacked the ball, and it hit the girl in the face and just wiped out her whole mouth and teeth, and she was badly hurt. Because it was like, she's, this thing's coming at her. She never saw anything like it. And the guy was big, a big, strong person who transitioned. He transitioned, but he didn't transition his muscle. And uh, he took that ball, he whacked it, went, hit her right in the face. She said, I've never seen anything like it. It came at me, there was nothing I could do. The weightlifters, you see the weightlifting records are being broken by 100 pounds. Guys that, you know, records stood for 18 years. They couldn't get a quarter of a, an ounce, an eighth of an ounce on each side of the barbell. They couldn't do it. And uh, these guys walk up and they break the record by 143 pounds or whatever it is, some crazy number. It, upstairs, it stands for like 18 years, a quarter of an ounce on each side of a big barbell. And then some guy comes up, bing, oh, this is easy. Have you lifted before? No, I haven't actually. No, the whole thing is crazy. The swimmers are being, the records are being broken at levels. And you know, it's very demeaning to women actually. Very demeaning to women. But I love women athletes. I love women athletes. But they, they shouldn't be allowed. I think it's dangerous in many cases. And in some cases, it's just unfair. Uh, the sad part is that a lot of women, they know this, and they don't want to talk about it. Because, you know, we're in like this communist regime nowadays where you're not allowed to speak the truth on elections or on things like that. And if they do, they try and have you thrown in the clinker. These people are sick, and they're not going to get away with it. They're not getting away with it. Crooked Joe puts China first. He puts Asia first. He puts Ukraine first. He puts illegal aliens first, environmental maniacs first. Environmental maniacs that want to destroy our country. Everyone else is first. He puts, think of it, he puts America last. He puts Iowa last, your farmers, your manufacturers. You got a lot of manufacturing here, too. He puts our workers last. He puts our farmers last. He puts everything that's good in our country last. I put Iowa first, and I put America first every single time. Very simple. Very simple. So it's no wonder that crooked Joe Biden and his far left lunatics are desperate to stop us by any means necessary, any means possible. They're weaponizing law enforcement for high level election interference because we're beating them so badly in the polls. The polls are incredible. Uh, the Iowa State poll came out recently, just now, I think. Trump is 54 percent. The sanctimonious is 18 percent and falling. And bird brain is 12 percent. Bird brain. Nikki Birdbrain, sir, I will never, ever vote against you. You are the greatest president in my lifetime. It's not that long. You know, she's not that old, actually. I would have preferred if she said in generations, but what is she, 54 or something? I'll take the 54, right? But uh, you are the greatest president, sir. I will never. She said it over and over again. I will never. They ask her, will you ever run against? No, I will not. 
He's been a great president. I will not do it. Two months later, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to announce my candidacy. It's bird brain. I know her well. She's not up to the job. In New Hampshire, DeSanctis is down in fifth place. Did you know that fifth? This is a fall like nobody's ever seen before. Now, that doesn't mean he's going to come in fifth, because he might come in sixth or seventh. Okay. And we're destroying crooked Joe Biden and the general by five, six, seven, eight, and in one case, 11 points, in one case, 14 points in the battleground states. And those are in the battleground states. And we're leading the Republicans by a lot in New Hampshire. We're leading them by a lot in South Carolina, where we go after that. And then we're leading them by a lot in Nevada, like by 65 points or something. So, but this is so important because you are first in the nation. Look, I kept you first in the nation. I'm the one that, will you please give me a good show at least out of it, okay? Please. Please. I mean, that's the least you can do. That's the least you can do. I mean, I got you 28 billion and I kept you in first place. I, frankly, the cash is more important. The 28 billion is more important. But I got you 28 billion. I kept you in first place. Make sure that I, we win by a lot. Because, you know, if we win by a lot, I think all these characters uh, cancel out. That's going to be the end of them. We got to just uh, got to get back. We got to beat the Democrats. We got to stop this nonsense. They have debates. They had a debate. Two weeks ago, I had an unbelievable rally in Hialeah, which is great. You know, it was incredible. It was like this. The place was packed, but it was thousands and thousands. It was a stadium. And I'm making a speech. I looked up. You couldn't get another person in the room. And I start. And then I notice the people from the way in the back up to the football stadium. So they start meandering down to the field. And the fake news said, there were empty seats. There were empty seats. No, there were no empty seats. They wanted to come down and be closer so that you could see. I could see them coming down. When I started, it was packed. Within five or ten minutes, the people wanted to come down to the field, be a little bit closer. I understand that. Probably not supposed to do it, but who the hell is going to stop them? It's a lot of people, right? <laughs> and the fake news said, we noticed empty seats. These people are the worst. Okay, they are the worst. They are the enemy of the people. They really are. The radical left Democrats rigged the presidential election of 2020, and we're not going to allow them to rig the presidential election of 2024. We're not going to allow it. Then. Not going to allow it. Every time the radical left Democrats, Marxists, communists, and fascists indict me, I consider it a great badge of honor. I'm being indicted for you, it's true. If I didn't run, I wouldn't be indicted. I'm, they're indicting me for complaining about election results. You ever see them? They're still complaining about 2016. Nobody got indicted. They're complaining that I was complaining, and it happens to be true. We have the facts, we have the figures, and. I hope the judges are going to allow that to be shown in court because those elections were rigged and they were badly rigged. Never forget our enemies want to take away my freedom because I will never let them take away your freedom. I'll never let it happen. Never. They want to silence me because I will never let them silence you. It's very simple. In the end, they're not after me, they're after you, and I just happen to be standing in the way. That's true. That's true. People ask me, would you have done it again, sir? You had such a great life. You had all these wonderful places you could go all over the world. You saw how strong my company is with this fake deal that's going on now. We didn't know he had that kind of cash. We didn't know he had that kind of a company. They didn't know because it was a private. It turned out to be a great company. Then they had to change their whole concept. Because they started off with a concept where it was the opposite. Now they're saying, oh, this is not good. And it's a great company. That's one thing that's come out. We have a crooked judge. We have a rigged, we have a rigged court case. We have a, an AG who campaigned 
when I will get Donald Trump. I will get Donald Trump. I swear. I will. Then she says, oh, I never said that. We got about 30 tapes. I will get Donald Trump. I will get him. I will. She doesn't know a thing about me. She didn't look at anything. She's campaigning. She, was, she wasn't an officer or anything. Didn't see anything. Nobody knew it was a private company. I will get Donald Trump. Uh, she's a radical lunatic. And we're winning this case so much, but we have a judge that refuses to give up. And we have a judge who's a Democrat club politician. Think of this. You put your, a, a piece of your life, you know, you built this great thing, and you put a piece of your life, New York City, where we did so well, in the hands of a radical left lunatic judge from the clubs. From the clubs. He's a Democrat club politician. He's now been overturned four times. He's been overturned more than any judge in New York State. And I got this guy as a judge. But somehow it's going to work out. You know, somehow, I can't tell you how, but somehow it's going to work out. Now, what it is doing, and I believe the reason we're doing so well in the polls is because the people see it. They see it as a, uh, a persecution of a political candidate. They see it as a continuation of the greatest witch hunt of all time. That's what it is. This is the greatest witch hunt that started with Russia, Russia, Russia. Remember that? He was with four hookers. You think that was good that night to go up and tell my wife, it's not true, darling. I love you very much. It's not true. Actually, that one she didn't believe because she said he's a germaphobe. He's not into that, you know? He's not into golden showers, as they say they called it. He's not. I don't like that idea. No, I didn't. I thought that would be a big problem. I was going to have a rough night, but... That one she was very good on. She said, no, that, you're okay on that one. <laughs> this is far more than a campaign that we're all involved in. This is a great political movement, the greatest in the history of our country. This is the greatest movement in the history of our country. Think of that. I appointed over 300 federal judges and three great Supreme Court justices. I kept my promise. I recognized Israel's eternal capital and opened the American embassy in Jerusalem. Hard to do. Got it done. I also recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. But, you know, those are all things we've done. And now you look at what's going on, and they don't sound as important, right? Because you look at what's happening over there. It would have never happened, should never have happened, and I would get it stopped very quickly with success because you can't let what happened with that raid was so horrible. Nobody has seen anything like it. They didn't even talk about it. Forty-two babies had their heads chopped off. I mean, this is savagery and other things, many, many other things. Thousands of people. It's uh, nobody's seen anything like it. I withdrew from the disastrous Iran nuclear deal, and we would have had a deal with them right after the election because Iran was broke. I told China, if you buy oil from Iran, we're not doing business. I told that to India. I told it to every country, you buy oil. And they were broke. They weren't paying to Hamas. They weren't paying to Hezbollah. They weren't paying to anybody. They were broke. And they would have had a deal, and they would have been happy with it. I would have been happy. Everybody would have been happy with it. But when these uh, idiots took over, they immediately took off all those sanctions, and Iran now has, forget about the six billion on the trade, you saw the trade, five, five hostages for six billion dollars, remember? They got six, we got six or five, but they got six billion dollars. So I said, give me the bad news. Well, the bad news, because I saw they got six, he got six, five and five, six billion dollars. I said, you mean... Are they paying anything to us? No. We give them $6 billion, meaning we free up. That's the same thing as far as I'm concerned. Then the other day, yesterday, they approved $10 billion more, $10 billion more. And uh, Iran now, and that's peanuts compared to what they've been allowed to make with the oil. They have probably $125 billion now. They have tremendous amounts of money. They're a very rich country. And when I was there, they were broke, and everybody talked about it. In fact, I saw one of the people that are up there, a real uh, terrible reporter, but said the other day, one thing I will say, Iran was broke when Trump was running this country. They couldn't do anything. They didn't have the money. They couldn't feed terrorism. Now they have so much money, they don't know what to do with it. And with the historic Abraham Accords, I even made peace in the Middle East, and that would have gone on, and we would have had every country, I think including Iran, in that deal, ultimately. But they did nothing with it. They did nothing.
For four straight years, I kept America safe. I kept Israel safe. I kept Ukraine safe. And I kept the whole world safe. And we will again as the 47th president of the United States. Right? Before I even arrive at the Oval Office, shortly after we win the presidency together, I will have the horrible war between Russia and Ukraine settled. We're going to get it settled. I know Putin very well. Get along with him. I know Zelensky very well. I'm the only candidate who can make this promise to you. I will prevent World War III from happening. I will prevent that. It's not going to happen. Because we've never been closer to World War III than we are right now. Never been closer. On my first day back in the White House, I will terminate every open borders policy of the Biden administration. I will stop the invasion on our southern border and begin the largest domestic deportation operation in American history. Back to their countries. I will immediately restore and expand the Trump travel ban. We all know what that is on entry from terror play countries. And I will implement strong ideological screening on all immigrants. I had a Trump travel ban on numerous countries which are horrible in terms of what's taking place within those countries and countries that hate us. I don't want them in our country. They hate our country. I don't want them in our country. If you hate America, if you want to abolish Israel, if you sympathize with jihadists and then we don't do exactly what you want, if you do all of these bad things and you have lots of bad thoughts in your mind, then you're not getting into the United States of America. You're not coming in. And we will take over our horribly run Washington, D.C. capital. Are you have a capital? That's the crime center of our country. And clean up, renovate, and rebuild our capital city so that it no longer is a nightmare of murder and crime. Last night, three people were killed. But rather, it will become the most beautiful capital anywhere in the world. We're going to take over the capital, and we're going to make it beautiful, and we're going to make it safe. We're going to make it great. We're going to do it, and we're going to get it done. We will stop Joe Biden's inflation disaster and rebuild our greatest economy. We're going to rebuild it. We have the greatest economy in history. We're going to build it back to an economy that's even better than what we had. We'll be able to do that. You know, we were energy independent just a short time ago, and we were soon going to be energy dominant. Forget about their pipeline. That wouldn't have happened. We would have been supplying all of the gas and oil to Europe. And we were going to make so think about Saudi Arabia, the kind of money they make over in Saudi Arabia. You mentioned debt. They don't know what debt is. They got so much money. They ordered many, many Boeing 777s, big, beautiful planes. And I said, do you use financing? They didn't know what I meant. <laughs> financing. No, we have cash. We were going to take, we have more oil than they do. We have more oil than oil and gas than Russia. We have more than anybody. We were in third place. And by the time I left, we were long, long ago in first place, way, way up. And we were going to supply Europe and Asia. We were going to supply every, and we were going to make so much money. We were going to pay down our debt, $34 trillion. Now it's just terrible. But we're going to pay down our national debt, and we're going to cut taxes still further. I gave you the largest tax cuts in history, but we can get them down still further. We're going to do that with our energy, which is real energy, not intermittent wind. Darling, I'd like to watch the president on television tonight. Honey, I don't think we'll be able to. The wind is not blowing. So crazy. Most expensive energy there is. I will deliver tax cuts, regulation cuts, energy price cuts, and interest rate cuts like you've never seen before because we start from such a high base. And unlike De Sanctus, I will protect Social Security and Medicare for our great seniors. He wanted to hurt Medicare and Social Security. Remember that. Remember that in 56 days. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding for any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto our children. That's an easy one, right? That's an easy one. 
So I want to just uh, tell you that you're a very special group of people. This is a special place to be because of the great success that we've had and uh, that we continue to have. And based on the polls, it looks like we're in good shape. But, you know, the worst thing you can do is say, oh, you know, we're going to stay because he's leading by so much. Get out and vote. Because there have been some bad surprises. You know, when everybody, when everybody says that, when everybody says that, uh, bad things, there's been some bad tragedies before. Everyone says, oh, Trump is going to win by so much. We don't have to vote tonight, darling. Let's go sit home and watch the caucus on television. Let's watch it on television. And they say, what's happening here? Very few people are voting. What's going on? No, we got to get out and vote. We got to make sure, you know, we have to send a great signal. And then maybe these people just say, okay, it's over now. It's over. We got to end it because we have to focus on crooked Joe Biden and the Democrats. That's what we have to focus on. We have to do what we did for four years. We did things, you know, people, even bad people back there said I was a great president from most standpoints of what you talk about, the economy, all of the things. We would have had no inflation because oil caused the inflation. When they shut off the spigots, oil went up so high, energy costs went up so high. And you know, you're one of the highest states in the country. I mean, I hate to tell you that, but you're one of the highest states in the country because they wouldn't allow a pipeline to be cut through a very poor section of New York State. And I'm going to get that done. I almost had that done, and then we had the rigged election, but it would have been done. So uh, I just want to tell you that we have to really swamp them and swamp them big. We're going to have something that's great. Uh, they want me to tell you to go out and sign up. We have a book here, beautiful book. Look at this book, how beautiful that is, see? You read pictures, but it basically is you sign up and you become a caucus captain. We want you to be a caucus captain. Does anybody want to be a caucus captain? Okay. So here's what I have. Look, you can sell this tonight on eBay, maybe for 20 or 25,000. But if you do, I'm going to be very angry at you. So I'm going to give you one here, darling. Good luck. So, thank you very much. I made a lot of enemies right now. I picked up four friends and I made a lot. No, but you'll all get, everybody gets a hat when they sign up. We have the, uh, those hats are beautiful, by the way. And uh, everybody gets a caucus captain hat when you sign up. But we want to make sure that we have a big victory. That's going to be a, you're going to be all over the world. They're going to be watching this. You are first. And they're going to be watching it. And uh, so anybody that wants to sign up, you get that hat, you get the book, you get everything. And we're going we're gonna to have a tremendous victory. And I was just been incredible. It's been an incredible state for me. And I've been incredible to you, too. I mean, I have to say. But I've been very good to you, too. And we want to restore our country to greatness. And we're going to do it. We're going to make America greater than it's ever been. And we can do that. We can do that. We have to act fast. One year is a long time for them to remain in office. You know, if you look at it, 
If you took the worst 10 presidents in the history of our country, they have not done the damage that Joe Biden and this crazed administration has done with weaponization and everything else. So get out there for the caucus. Get out there. Make it. We're going to swamp them. We have to swamp them right from day one. And if we do that, we're going to win so big and we will make America great again, 100 percent greater than ever before. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.